Hey guys, so I was watching the League of Graphs website and I found this guy who is currently the rank 2 player with Kale on the League of Graphs website currently at this moment while also being the rank 1 in terms of stats uh, on the EU Knee server. So today we're going to be taking a look at this guy that has a 92% win rate at 78 games, having an outstanding KDA while having a 10 CS per minute. This is Art is Dead. Today we're going to figure out how he plays this game, how he carries himself in solo queue. So with that being said, guys, let's take a look at this Kale player. Now, what I think is the most... Uh, interesting about this guy is that his runes are very different from what we are being used to. So most Kale players are currently playing with fleets, which is a very uh, good way to sustain in the lane while also positioning very well. However, this guy is playing with Presti Attack and with Presence of Mind with Alacrity and Coup de Grace while also having Transcendence and the Gathering Storm with attack speed 80 and magic resist. Now, that's something that I don't see that much. He also plays with Doran Shield as the starter item, which is also something that I don't see that much. The truth is, like, most Kale players are playing with Corrupting Potion or they're playing with a Doran Ring. But this guy seems to value scaling a lot in this game, especially because he's playing with Press the Attack has the alacrity but also plays the game with transcendence and gathering storm that's like pure scaling and the dorn shield is going to allow him to tank up all the poke that he gets that he receives uh from the lux so i wonder how is he going to carry this game especially now that lux is already starting off the game with one kill how is he going to manage how is he going to try to like push himself towards winning this game now, guys, I play Kale myself too, right? Kale is one of my main champions myself. Um, I can already tell based on these matchups, it's not going to be a fun one. Kale needs to scale up a lot in this game in order to um, to beat, uh, especially to beat Lux. However, Kale does outscale very hard, and if Lux makes a mistake, he should be able to get like at least a few kills. But the only thing is, what I find so interesting is that he's playing with this scale, like such a massive scaling rune page. I want to see this in action. I want to see how that's going to work out. So currently he's just playing really safe. He just has to play super safe because he doesn't have the level 6 yet. So the, um, the one thing he values is just scaling. The early game is probably just him farming as much as possible. And as soon as he gets to level 6 and beyond, uh, he's, go he's going to be able to like pressure the lane and then probably get like a few kills. But ultimately, this guy values farming so much. This guy has an outstanding 10 CS per minute. Just focusing on farming a lot until he scales up. The Doran Shield has been tanking a lot from Lux so far, and he still has one potion to use. I really wonder, what is he going to max? Is he going to max E or Q? I'm assuming it's going to be a Q. He's about to reach level 4 soon, we will figure out. Yeah, he's going to max uh, the Q first, so... Uh, you know that like Kale has been changed lately, uh, you know her E is now doing like, the more you max it, the less cooldown, which I think is a nice change, but this guy is maxing Q. I was expecting it already, maxing Q in this matchup is very good. So far he's just, he's completely focusing himself purely on getting the farm. Not trading the Lux, not throwing in Cure E at her. Just specifically focusing on the farm and keeping the lane around his side of this lane. And it's working very well so far. Considering that Lux has one kill. Already starting off with an advantage. 
being in a matchup like this one, he seems to be doing pretty well. The Dorn Shield is really helping him survive like every Lux E. He still has the one potion that he, he hasn't used it yet. He still has that potion all the way from the start of this lane. And considering that he's already been poked that much, he's keeping up very well with his Lux. He's trying to set up the lane for a gank uh, for Nunu. That's why he he was like on the top side of the mid lane, so that Lux would, f so that he could force Lux to be on the the bottom side of the mid, so Nunu could gank a lot easier. He completely set up that lane for Nunu to gank it and then get a kill that way. Unfortunately, Lux got away, but it was really well played by Kale. That was a really good setup. This guy is kind of like buying lifesteal, but now goes for Berserker's Grief instead. So he's he's definitely uh, valuing the um, the movement speed a lot. Rushing the Berserker's Griefs on Kale, uh, taking that movement speed first while having that attack speed too. This is a very great starter for uh, for Kale. He's about to reach level 6 very soon. That's where this matchup gets a lot easier. So the lane is going to get pushed in towards Kale again. He's not pushing, he's not trying to throw in any Qs or anything at all. He's about to play a lot more aggressive right now. He threw like a Q towards Lux. He's trying to stack up his passive by uh, using like 5 autos on the creeps. So he can get that extra... I gain that extra movement speed so he can sidestep the Lux a lot easier. Trying to get the pressure. He's starting to push right now. That's something he hasn't done in the entire pre-6 of the game. He sees that Lux is roaming to bot lane and is pinging like crazy to make, to make the team go back. But the team is not going back just yet. Instead of following Lux to bot lane, this guy would rather push the lane so he can take the entire farm and then TP's bot lane to try and make a play. Very unlucky. They get away with it. This was highly in the favor of Kale. Lux is roaming bot lane. Kale decides to push the lane and then TP bot lane. That's very good because this allows Kale, besides Lux's roaming, Kale just got a huge advantage against Lux right now just by pushing that lane. There's currently a 57 CS for Kale and 38 for Lux. That's a massive difference. So considering that Lux has already got one kill from the level one, Lux, I mean Kale is already about to uh, to snowball in this game just simply by farming. This is exactly what he's trying to pull off. He just wants to get the 10 CS per minute. So he can stay super farmed up and eventually outskill that Lux. And it's working very well. He's got like 20 CS difference against Lux right now. He's already creating a massive advantage without really taking a kill just yet. Despite going teleporting bottom. Um, this is his way to play. It appears that he's probably going to buy the uh, the Hexagumblick as the first item. He can push right now since Hecarim is showing up bot lane. He has definitely no issues uh, pushing down his lane right now. Lux is also roaming bot lane. So he can push this way for free right now. He knows that he knows that there's nobody around him. Places down a ward in the bottom river because he knows that Lux and Hecarim are on the bottom side. And he already takes down the first plating. So he has a 25 CS difference right now up against Lux. Uh, while also having one plating. 
it doesn't really matter if Lux roams around the map. If this guy always gets the farm and always gets the platings, he will eventually create a much bigger advantage than Lux. Thirty CS difference right now. He's not really looking to roam anywhere. He just wants to stay in lane to keep on farming up, to keep the pressure right now. He's hard pushing the lane just to get the pressure. So he, he might be able to get something off. Sees a pretty big opportunity, but could not get the kill in the Lux. Hecarim's coming in, probably gonna clean him up. Oh, he took... Oh, okay. So he missed uh, He missed the kill on Lux, uh, probably just being super unlucky because it all it had was just like one auto. Uh, however, Hecarim came up to clean up the entire mess. I think he made a pretty... He, he could have killed that Hecarim if only he did not took the... the uh, the tower shot. If he didn't take that, he would have probably killed Hecarim in the 1v1. Probably would have taken him down, but he just made a small mistake. He has a Nuna gang, so he... Once again, you can... Based on how he's moving... Based on how Kale is positioning himself around, the, around mid lane... He's forcing Lux to be on the side of where Nunu is going to gank the lane. He always puts himself inside that position where the enemy opponent is going to be in... Where, where they're being forced to be in, in a position where the jungler is currently at. That's a great way to set up a lane for a gank to get kills very quickly. Once you have junglers ganking your lane. Once again, has a, he almost has a 40 CS difference in this, in this lane right now. He already has about three platings when Lux has no platings at all. Despite Lux having such an amazing start, Kale is just completely out farming this Lux while also getting like three platings. So he's got a massive lead over Lux right now and it's only growing bigger. Pretty good uh, roam by the Kale, taking down the Dragon as well. They got the bounty on Hecarim's head. This is the moment where Kale is going to shine. Gets another kill on the Lux. This Kale player is playing in a very uh, safe way in the early game. Just a snowball further on later. Unfortunately, it goes down though because Vayne has like seven kills right now. Uh, take in note, take in consideration that bot lane currently has over ten deaths. They are completely losing the entire lane in bot lane. So Kale has to somehow carry this game when bot lane is having such a ridiculous game. Let's speed up a little bit. Okay, so now considering that bot lane is feeding super hard, how exactly is Kale going to carry this game? Let's find out. He's just going to keep on farming up. He keeps on maintaining that pressure around mid. This is very important because if you have the pressure in mid, it allows you to roam down top and bottom whenever, the, whenever your team needs help. This is... A very, very important thing about laning. Without pressure, you cannot carry. He's trying to hide himself behind the wall so the enemy team goes for a fight. Very, very well played by Kale because Kale was right behind the wall, sitting and waiting until the enemy team goes for it. He completely bait the enemy team into th into thinking that he wasn't there. Sidestepping the Lux Q and going 1v2. And he's gonna maintain that pressure once again. He just 
he wants to get the pressure right now so he can use that to like push up to the turret or being able to roam around the map either way maintaining pressure is super important guys if you want to carry games in solo queue if you're like low elo having pressure is key he sees vayne and the enemy team walking up to mid lane uh, but not exactly going here they're just like kind of walking around the wall but he doesn't take any risk he's just going back completely He sees that the enemy team is bot lane, all, all of them. So he's going to stay for yet again another wave. So he can take that farm as well. Trying to look to see if he could kill the kill if he could take a kill against the Lux. He flashed Eat. Once again, very well played. He sidestepped Lux Q. So he could walk up to Lux. Hitting with a, hitting the Q and the W for the extra movement speed, taking the kill that right there. He has about a 70 CS lead over Lux right now. Completely doubling the farm of the enemy mid laner. He knows where Hecarim is. He went topside river. I mean topside uh, jungle. So he can take another wave right now. Without just not taking any risks. Before he proceeds to go back, he wants to farm like another camp. I think that's because he wants to get this second item as quickly as possible. This guy values farm a lot. This guy really wants to take the 10 CS per minute. Just so he could take the, the secondary items and the third items as quickly as possible. Doesn't take any risk at all against Vayne. Just completely backs off. Just so he can take the farm. He's going to go... He's, he's not even going back just yet. Before going back to base, he's just going to get another wolves. Another camp for himself. This is exactly how he gets the 10 CS per minute. This is how he pulls it off. Takes another wave in mid. Even when the dragon is nearly spawning, he's taking that wave before going back. I'm not sure about this. He should have backed off, starting uh, setting up the dragon. Now he's probably going to lose the dragon, at least the mounted dragon. Unless he has teleport, but he doesn't have that. Honestly, not really worth it. Because... The dragon, especially the third one, is very important. The sooner you can get the, the, the four dragons, the better. He kind of messed up, but he did get to the power spike of his build a lot sooner, so... It's kind of like... It's kind of whatever. Currently, he has about 163 CS when Lux only has about 84. He's trying to keep on rotating uh, the, the mid wave towards the jungle camp so he can uh, take everything away from the enemy team. He's so completely farmed up that he can literally walk up to Hecarim and just completely destroy him before he can do something. Not very sure why Senna decided to take that red buff from Kale because this could have been... Uh, he could have done even more with that red buff. So this time, without just farming mid lane, he's going top to start to finally start snowballing the game. To start getting objectives such as the top turret. The game is about to be free for Kale. Very well played by Kale. Getting hit by the Hecarim ultimate, he decides to ult it immediately. Very well played by Kale. The ultimate countered Hecarim's ultimate. And proceeds and takes down the jungle camps from the golem as well. Moving up to mid. He's trying to flank the enemy team so he can take those kills as well. 
but he doesn't get them. They get away. At least they could either take the Baron or they could take the turret. So, based on what we're watching here, Kale has a... He's got a very defensive way of playing the early game, playing the pre-6. As soon as he gets to level 6, he values farming a lot in so like such a good way like the only thing he focused on is farming and using his teleport to roam around the map he also tries to get the pressure in mid so he can use that to roam and get things done this is the way how he plays how he carries the game he fully focused himself including the entire setup he plays with um talking talking about the gathering storm as well as the transcendence he's using the entire setup completely carrying the mid lane game this guy is not necessarily an early game player he literally just focused himself on the mid lane game trying to uh, eliminate as many mistakes as possible so he can carry the game the enemy team does not know that he's taking down the baron Got a Baron buff for free. That's going to allow him to to snowball the game further to keep to to somehow end the game. Let's see what item he gets. He doesn't get any item, but he does go back to base. Okay. This is a I, I like this way of playing Kale personally. Uh, the Kale how, how I play Kale myself is a very similar way, except this guy plays Kale mid and I play Kale top. But his setup is what his setup is what really amazes me. Like, I never play with Gathering Storm on okay? Kale. Okay, he goes back to pushing mid. This is good because the dragon is spawning very soon, right? The Baron is spawning soon and he has to get the pressure in mid by pushing it. He's going bot lane to see if he can take down the Vayne before the dragon spawns. If they get that Vayne, the dragon is going to be free. 100%. Her ultimate is not going to do that much. A Vayne that has 9 kills is not able to carry this game because Kale is literally walking over these guys. Gets the dragon, immediately walks back to mid so he can uh, take the farm again. Okay. Well, that Baron buff is dead. It's going to carry them soon. Soon enough. And he gets to finish the the third item, which is the Rage Blade. Now he has the core build, right? He has the Berserker's Greaves, which provides movement speed. Has the Hexagon Blade for the 1v1s and having, like, more sustain. While also getting the Nash's Tooth for the on-hit damage and also getting the Rage Blade to maximize the damage. This is the, the best build that Kel can go for at the moment. All that they have to do now is simply like push one lane and then just end the game. They are far strong enough to do anything they want. He's putting himself in a pretty bad situation, but he does get out with the flash. I think he made like a tiny mistake, but he should be fine. Oh, he got caught by the <laughs> by the ball. He could have been alive though. He could have definitely been alive. Okay, he's back again. There we go. The enemy team got like multiple turrets out of this. This was not really dead well played by Kale. Uh, he made a pretty big mistake by starting that team fight, getting caught, and then at the end getting hit by the ball. So he's just gonna proceed taking like uh, by taking camps. Um, he 
should be going bot lane at this point. His teleport is up at the moment. If he decides to split bot lane, there's so much that he could do. But that's that's that that would be my uh, take on this game. Let's see what he does. He decides to go mid. Probably wants to play around top and mid. Despite himself playing with teleport this game, he general like generally this guy doesn't really split. He's mainly playing around mid. And then using that pressure to go top or bottom. He's about to reach level 16 here. He needs like one more creep to reach level 16. I think he's trying to wait for the level 16. Well, like once he gets level 16, it's pretty much over. That's where KO becomes insanely strong. Level 16 provides so much for Kale, it, it makes her like unbeatable in certain situations. Yep, now he got to level 16. This is where things get so much fun for him. Honestly, the team is really making a lot of mistakes for him. What really is supposed to happen right now is having one person to split the game and then having the rest of the team to pressure, right? However, this game is specific. The team is kind of kind of walking around farming the jungle camps while farming bot and top. But they're not necessarily like pr pressuring the game at all. You're already dead. We just have they don't focus on pressuring anything. They're, they'd rather focus on, on, on walking around until the dragon spawns. Which, yeah. I feel like they could have probably ended this game like a lot sooner. However, like, Kale is just, un has He's just in an unfortunate team at the moment. They're going for the Baron. The enemy team is trying to go for the Baron when these guys have the pressure. This is going okay, this is gonna be a win. Kale is going to walk over this team fight. Not even using the ultimate. Not even. Yeah, this is where it ends. Very well played by Kale. 100% carry, despite the bot lane playing so awful. Uh, this guy carried them. Anyways, um, there's a lot for you guys to learn in this game. Hopefully, I've been able to help out you guys by uh, showing you guys a couple things about this guy. Uh, if you guys want to see like challenger gameplay, do not forget to check out my stream. I'm streaming like six times a week playing challenger games, so don't forget to check that out, guys. But anyway... Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.